So, what next? Well, Jess has gone out to get a new cable. We could check his place, I guess. Now that he's gone, we can get inside? Yes, let's do that. I'll close my eyes and you pick that lock, Mitzi. Okay, but no peeking. I'd never. You've really hurt my feelings now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now close them. There, job done. Jesus, are these... They're just Halloween masks. Oh, good. That's good. Because I swear, if I see another bloody head... So, who's got windows over this side of the building? Well, Joe Davis lives right below. I guess we could also check one flat below Joe's. I just hope the cable's long enough. Let's find out, shall we? I should be able to use that computer now. Could you give me five minutes, Mrs. A? Sure. Why not? I'll keep an eye on the door. It 
that's not him either. God damn it! Do you want to go in first? Come on in. The place seems empty. Watch out, Mrs. A. There's a massive hole in the floor. Just step around it. I'm not blind. Besides, I know it's there. We saw it from the floor below. Let's have a look around. There's got to be a computer here somewhere. I really don't like this place. Yeah. It's rather creepy. Bingo. We found what we were looking for. This laptop could be it, you know. Maybe Joe is our guy after all. No, no, no. It's a disaster. The power lead is missing. It won't switch on. Right. What a shame. Can we go now, please? I think I've seen enough. I don't need any more trouble. No, it's okay. I've got an idea. It seems it's a similar model to mine. I'll just go back to the flat and bring my power lead. I don't know. Are you sure this is gonna work? I think so. At least we'll give it a shot. Just stay here and I'll be back in a second. Just hurry up. Yep. I'll just grab the power lead and run right back. It's just across the hall. I'll be back before you know it. I will count to a hundred. If you're not back, I'm out of here. I'll be back before you get to 75. Don't worry. Hey, I just remembered something that'll keep you busy. While I'm gone, think of a vegetable. What? Why? To keep your mind occupied. I bet I can guess which vegetable you were thinking of when I'm back. So you're a mind reader now? No. This is just a little experiment of mine. Okay, whatever. Now go. I'm counting already. Why do I always end up in places like this?
Remember the hole, Susan. Damn, the door handle just came off in my hand. How am I going to get out of here now? Mitzi? Mitzi, are you there? Shit. Careful now. Jesus. What the? I've got to get out of here. What? Jesus. No. You were not supposed to be here! she ever done to you? What? Look, sir, you are wrong. I just came here to find my cat. It's gone missing. Yeah, I see. That stupid cat. I've been looking for it too. The little bastard took off with my key. I'm gonna rip him to pieces. trouble just let me go and I've got a gun I can shoot you right there in your heart it's not worth it Joe I've done you no harm of course you haven't got a heart isn't that right I I have no idea what you're talking about listen I've got to go now all right I'll slowly walk out of here, and you'll never see me again. Calm down. I'll go now, and we'll forget all about this. There's nowhere to go. It's all wrong. No matter what I do. Damn it! Get back here right now and give me that blasted key! Please, don't get angry. I don't have any keys. 
just sit down and take a deep breath while I make my way out, all right? Come in, come in! There's no need to be afraid, I, I don't buy it. Come in already, I might need your help with something. my help. I thought you wanted to kill me. Why would I want to kill you? You must be mistaken. Who do you think I am? Sorry. I must have gotten the wrong idea. It happens to me sometimes. I've been known to be a bit intimidating, I guess. But I'm not a violent person. Okay. Good to know. I mean, I will use violence if I'm pushed against the wall. Do you know what I mean? All too well, Mr. Davis. All too well. This is all just a dream, right? It's funny that you would say that. I've already heard that somewhere today. But if this is a dream... I've been asleep for a very long time. Where are we? I really can't remember the name of this town, but I'm pretty sure the hotel is called Quiet Haven. This is a hotel? I know. It's a joke. They shouldn't charge half the price for this dump if you ask me. I'm sorry. I just want to leave. Yes, I understand. I wouldn't stay here myself if it was my decision to make. I'm stuck here too. You see, my wife Ivy is in the room to the left. She's a little fragile at the moment. She said she was going to do her makeup, but it's been a week now. Maybe long. Every time I try to talk to her, she just gets angry. And she tells me she's not done yet. I've cooked her a meal, but she ignores me. She never likes what I cook. But what's that got to do with me? If you talk to her, I'll show you the way out, I promise. Just go in there and tell her. Tell her she looks fine. She's always so careful about looking perfect. Okay, okay. I'll see what I can do. Goodbye, Joe. Hello? Misery? Is 
that what you said? No. 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 No! This isn't Ivy! This isn't my wife! It's the monster. It followed me here. It always follows me. No matter what I do. Look, I'm... I'm sorry. You must kill it. What? Why me? You still got that power lean, haven't you? The one you stole from me? How do you even know about it? You must use it to kill her. To strangle her. You're out of your mind! Do it! Strangle the goddamn creature so it never follows me again or I'll shoot you right here, right now! Kill me if you want, but I won't do that. You're with her? I should have guessed. I can't trust you. You're better off dead. Are you alright, Mrs. A? You look like you've seen a ghost. I... Something strange happened. Maybe I am mad after all. Don't be silly. I was gone for less than one minute. Really? Somehow it felt longer than that. Time drags when you've got nothing to do, I guess. I see you found the laptop cable. That's good news, because I don't think mine will be any good. Let's see what's on this hard drive, shall we? Well, that was a waste of time. Never mind. At least now we're sure it's not him. Let's just go. I don't want to spend another minute in this place. Hey, did you think of a vegetable? What? I'd asked you to think of a vegetable while I was gone. So, did you? I... yeah. Sure. Great. Now don't tell me, was it... Carrot. No. Sorry. Oh, that's... odd. Are you sure? Yes. I thought about celery. Now let's go. Joe can come back any minute, and you don't want to meet him. He is not a nice guy.
This is it. We've got all we need. Great! Are you going to tell me about the Cat Widow now? Yes, it's story time, Mitzi. The legend says there was once a bad man who hated cats. He hated his neighbours too, and his job. And when it rained, he'd curse and smash things. He hated his bald head and his weak, ugly body. He probably hated himself the most, although he would never admit it. I think I see where this is going. One day, out of pure hatred for the whole world and everything that lives, he captured a family of cats and drowned them all in the river. That day, the sun turned black and all the birds went silent as the six kittens struggled for life. But, trapped in a strong canvas bag, they never had a chance. They all died that day, all but one. The mother cat, in a desperate fight to set herself free, by pure luck clawed her way out of the bag and swam to the shore. She lost everything that day, her beautiful children and her proud husband. Her heart crashed into pieces as she watched their limp dead bodies stolen by the current. Running after them, she followed them for days, for as long as she could. Then, eventually, she lost sight of them. She stayed on the bank of the river for a while. The world stopped turning for her, her eyes empty and blind. And then, one day, she slowly slid down the bank and into the cold, dark water. She gave in to it. She let the river take her away too, cover her mouth, her ears, her eyes. But as the water filled her lungs and she started slipping into darkness, there was another strange feeling that burst in her mind like a ball of flames. Anger, rage even, her last craving before she drowned was for revenge, for blood. And so she returned, reborn and changed, a cat widow, veiled in black, mistress of the cats. Her body of a young woman, but her eyes of a cat. And her face, white, rotten, face of a corpse. Those who saw it rarely lived to tell the tale. She would get her revenge on all cat killers and cat torturers. But there was someone she had to see first. Someone special. Someone she really hated the most. As the evening came, it was strangely quiet in the man's flat. As he lived alone, he usually liked to fill the silence with the sound of radio or TV shows. But that night, he switched them all off, feeling anxious and tired after work. He tried to sleep, but couldn't. And for once, there wasn't anyone there he could blame for it. As he stared through the window, he kept thinking about how much he hated that view. He liked it once, a long time ago, when his wife was still there and they were happy together. Suddenly, he heard knocking on the door. Some part of him was glad because that meant he could take it out on whoever decided to bother him. nobody there. He almost felt disappointed, but before he turned to walk away, he suddenly noticed something down the hall. He 
he noticed a shadow of a cloaked figure standing ahead. He stopped again. He couldn't believe his eyes. Someone wrote cat killer on his door. He had a passion for trains. Although he hated being a train driver, he had always enjoyed watching them move. But now, his train model was moving all on its own. He was absolutely certain he'd left it switched off. And yet, there it was, running at crazy speed, remote control missing. Something was seriously wrong, and that something had entered his home now too. He hoped he was just imagining things, tired as he was. But there was another surprise waiting for him in his bedroom. Cat Widow is here, was written all over the wall. As in a dream, he went to the kitchen to get a drink. There was no water. He knew there were valves in the basement that turned it off, but no one's been down there for years. He felt sick. None of this made any sense. And yet, deep down, he knew what he did to the cats was wrong. There was a part of him that almost wanted to be punished. The part he tried so hard to hide. He thought he'd heard something in the corridor. Was there someone there with him? His head was spinning. He felt ambushed, trapped. Like an animal, he had to get out of there. Getting really scared now, he decided to call the police. His phone was of no use. The SIM card had been removed, and that wasn't even the worst part. There was a photo of a black cat set a screensaver. He remembered this cat. He'd watched that strange pest control man put it in a cage and into his van. He'd looked at it through the window for a while, then pulled the curtains and went to bed. He stopped, paralyzed. He'd heard something right in front of him. A whisper. More like a her. She was there, in the dark corner of his living room, waiting. Black veil covering that pale, dead face. And yet, he could almost feel Cat Widow's eyes piercing through him. She came closer, like a ghost, and swiftly removed the veil. She came back for him, to take him to the river, to make him pay for what he'd done. As he looked into her eyes, he could feel the world spinning around him. His knees go weak, 
his pants suddenly wet around his crotch. As much as he hated life, he didn't want to die either. Inside, he was just a big, stinking coward. And then he fainted. Did you see his face? I knew he'd fall for this. Yeah, we scared the living shit out of him. Now that's teamwork. Are you sure he won't know it was you, though? Oh, he probably will, once he's had time to think about what happened. But he's too proud to ever admit he's been beaten by a woman. I know him just about enough to know that. Let's hope so. I don't want you to get in trouble because of me. No. That was something I had to do for myself, and I feel much better for it. The only problem now is that we still haven't found Eye of Adam, because it definitely isn't Brian. I've searched through his laptop, and all I found was a load of porn. Let's cross him off the list. Well, that means we've checked everyone. We've hit a brick wall. Perhaps I was wrong. Maybe he doesn't live here at all. I think we need to sleep on it. And we might get some more ideas in the morning. Shall we head back home? Yeah, I do feel tired. You're right, we need some sleep. Really wish there was an elevator in this building. A note? What does it say, Mrs. A? You will not believe it. Meet me at midnight, both of you. I will wait. Flat five. Door will be open. Do not fear. Eye of Adam. Flat five? That's the old guy. Can't be. It can't be him. I guess we'll find out at midnight. We've got a few hours until then. Let's get some coffee. It's just you and me, my love. No one will find us here. Stop worrying, Ivy. It will be alright. I will always love you. You know that. I'm gonna make you all better.
door. Crazy son of a bitch. That's not gonna stop us. I think there's someone in the kitchen. Are you... Are you Adam? Me? No, of course not. I don't have anything to do with all this foolishness. Never have. It's my son. I've told him time and time again, but he never listens. I've done my best to protect that boy, you know. I'm all he's got left in the world since his mama died, but it just wasn't enough. Where is he then? Where's I, Adam? He's in his room. Where else would he be? He's always in his room, staring at that screen for as long as he can. Look, I've made up my mind about this. I want to help you. This mess he's in, it's gone too far. I don't, I, I, I can't be part of this. What are you talking about? Oh, you don't understand. He's watching us. Right now, he can see us on his camera. He's very clever with this stuff. I never got my head around it. Just as much as I needed to, I guess. But not a lot. Give us the key to his room. I want to talk to him. Look, it's a trap. He knows why you're here. And he will kill you. Both of you. But he will not kill me. He won't dare. All these years. I've looked after him well. He owes me everything. It breaks my heart to do this now. What choice do I have? He left me this. I was supposed to keep it for myself. But I want you to take it. He won't dare to kill his own father. I won't let two innocent lives be lost because of him. What is it? Just take the damn thing. There's not much time. Didn't you hear me? He's watching. What is it, Mrs. A? It's a shoebox. Take it away. Get rid of it. He must see that I don't have it anymore. Shall we open it? Oh, God. Mitzi, we have to get out of here. Quickly. It's a gas mask. He's going to poison us. It's too late! Shit. Oh, shit. 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 No! Stop that, Adam! You're going to kill your father! We'll never make it to the door. That room is filling up with gas too quickly. Put the mask on, Mrs. A. What about you? No. No, I can't! You've got to. This is your only chance. I... No. I can't let you die. Not like this. It's my fault that you're here. I'm dying anyway. And you... You've got to live, Mrs. A. You'll live and you'll be happy again. You are... You've been a great friend, Mrs. A. No. You've got a date. And I'll make sure you turn up for it. I can't. There is no time to argue. I'll be fine. Now.
Welcome home, darling. I've been waiting for you. What took you so long? Say what you've got to say and let's finish this. I'm tired of you. Tired of all this madness. I just need to get back. Very well. I'm not planning to keep you long. Let's go inside. I have one last job for you. There are still two candles left, Susan. You know how this works. A soul for a soul. And that's it. I blow out the last candle and I'll never have to see you again. Only if you blow out the right one, I'll never bother you again. Isn't that what you want? But if you choose wrong, it will be your life extinguished forever. Just take a deep breath and do it. But how should I know which one's right? That's the thing, Susan. You can't know that. In life, you can't always know the consequences before you make a decision. Haven't you learned that yet? That's not fair. Nothing is fair. You opened your heart talking to that doctor and he butchered you like an animal. Then those disgusting cannibals, they chop you up and cook you for dinner if you'd let them. And what about the man with the flowers? All that he wanted was to hear you play before he split your skull open. The way your husband treated you. The way your neighbors laughed at you for years, just for being different. You did not deserve all that, and yet it happened. Am I forgetting something? Oh yes, of course. Most of all, was it fair that... Shut up! Just shut up, you ugly bitch! Now I know who you really are. All those feelings that I had in me for years. That bitter guilt and self-pity. That hatred for myself and everyone else. You are that miserable illness that's consumed my heart all these years. You, always there, always. Every day I looked at you in the mirror, like a dark cloud I couldn't see through. I let you take control of my life. I believed it was right to feel like this. But not any longer. This ends here. Then blow out the candle. No, I won't. I'm done playing your stupid little games. You won't tell me what to do anymore. I am stronger than you. I can close my eyes and you'll be gone. Blow out the candle! It's time to say goodbye, sister. I'm not gonna miss you. You will never leave this place without me. You need me. We are one. No. Tomato. You were thinking about a tomato, right? Tomato is a fruit, silly. Who cares? I like tomatoes. So do I. But I hate to disappoint you, but I was really thinking of onions. Why onions? They're the saddest of the vegetables, of course. They make people cry. I... What happened, Mrs. A? I saw you die. And yet, you're here. Alive, like if nothing's ever happened. Well, let's put it this way. Everyone knows cats have nine lives. So do cat ladies, apparently. 
But this time, I feel there won't be second chances. I'm down to one last life now. I can't afford to waste it. You are such a nutter, Mrs. A. You are absolutely fucking bonkers. But I'm so happy to see you. Never, ever do that to me again, all right? I can happily promise you that, Mitzi. This is it. His room is through that door. It's time to face the eye of Adam. What are we waiting for? Let's do it. You're... You're the eye of Adam? A pathetic, wheelchair-bound invalid? Is this a joke? Do you know who I am? Do you know what you've done to me? You fucking murderer! Tonight it's your turn to die. I'm gonna paint this room with your brains and I'm gonna watch and smile. I swear to God I'll do it. Well? Nothing to say? Nothing at all? Aren't you going to beg for your sad little life? Say something! Anything! Mitzi, where did you get that gun from? It doesn't matter. Please, Mrs. A. This is something I have to do. You are free to leave if you want. You don't have to be a part of it. Just try to understand. Beg for forgiveness, you scum! What is wrong with you? You don't believe I'm gonna shoot you, do you? Oh, I've dreamt of this moment for so long. Look at this man, Mitzi. He hasn't twitched a muscle since we entered the room. I think he's paralyzed. That's... That's impossible. He's lying to us. He's faking it. Do something. Talk for God's sake. I need you to answer me. I need to know. He won't answer you. He can't talk. Then, how did he post all that stuff online? What the? I think I know how. See that little device on his left eye? I've heard about these. It's a controller. It seems the only part of his body he can move is his eyeball. Controller connected to the computer tracks its movement, allowing him to... What? That's ridiculous. How do you even know such things? I'm a nurse? I've seen these before. Well, I've seen eye-controlled wheelchairs, but there's no reason why it wouldn't work with a computer. Jesus. That would explain the whole Eye of Adam thing. He really is just the eye. But... No. That doesn't change anything. He must die. He deserves nothing more. Shit! I will fucking do it! Just tell me one thing. One thing. Why? Why did you make Jack kill himself? Fine. 
It'll be a pleasure. Ready to die, scumbag? You lied to me. You never said you wanted to kill him. Now, wasn't that quite obvious? What did you think I wanted to do? Have a coffee with him? Chat about the weather or, or politics? For God's sake, I'm here because this son of a bitch needs to die. If I don't kill him now, he'll just carry on and more innocent people will lose their lives. Do you really want that? Because I don't. This isn't the way to do it. Just turn these computers off instead. No! He doesn't deserve to live after what he's done. And who are you to serve justice like this? Do you really want to kill an unarmed, paralyzed man? Why are you doing this, Mrs. A? I thought you were my friend. That's exactly why I'm doing this. Even if we survive the explosion, how will you be able to live with yourself? I won't have very long to live with it. I'll manage just fine. Think about it for a second. Would Jack really want this? This bastard messed with Jack's head. He tricked him. That's what he does. He fucking tricked him. But would Jack really want you to become a murderer? No. He wouldn't. He wasn't violent at all. He was the kindest, sweetest guy I ever knew. Exactly. Now, put that gun down already. But what about me? No, I'll do it. I know Jack will forgive me. Without his father, he's harmless. He was the one who supplied him with all this technology. He fulfilled his every single wish. I know this guy's rotten bad. There's no excuse for what he did. But he will be punished for it. Trust me. They'll put him in some stinking nursing home. He'll live his life like a vegetable, stuck to bed. He'll have time to think about what he's done. And he'll never see a computer screen again. Isn't that enough? He said, do it. He wants to die and I want to kill him. He wants us all to die. Can't you see that? Isn't that what he's been preaching? A joint suicide. That's why he wants you to shoot him, so we can all get blown to pieces. His final act, the work of his life. Are you really going to give him that satisfaction? Remember what you said about feeding the troll? That's exactly what you're going to do if you kill him now. No, if you're right. You should leave, Mrs. A. I've never wanted you to get hurt but I'm not going away without this fucker dead. Even if that means I die too. Mitzi, have you lost your mind? You're going to sacrifice your life for this scum? He's a parasite, a worthless evil piece of shit. It's not like I've got anyone to live for, is it? What? What about your mother, your family? She's dead. Yeah. I lied. I always lie. I grew up in an orphanage. My family never wanted to know me. The only person that cared about me was Jack. And he's dead! Yeah. Happy now? So get the fuck out of here and let me do what I got to do. I care about you. Do it for me. Come on, mate. It's been a long day. Let's go home. We've won.
Have we really? Trust me, I know we have. How? I'm the cat lady. From now on, I win every single day. It's me, again, talking about my ordinary little life, as usual. I'm still surprised anyone would want to read this at all. The ramblings of a cat lady. Maybe I'm not a cat lady anymore. Things have changed here since Mitzi's death. I'll never forget those last few weeks. It's a horrible way to die. Stuck in a hospital bed with no hope and whole life to pass you by. Six months ago, I lost the best friend I'd ever had. But at least we knew it was coming. I had time to accept it, just like she did. And I can only be glad we spent that time together. I still miss her though, every day. Did I ever mention I got into all this because of her? laptop the night after the funeral and there it was a friend request over a year old a little gift from behind the grave I met some people we go out sometimes and I'm not alone anymore it turned out there were others who felt like I did I talked to them tried to help And now, I'm writing this blog. I must confess, yesterday was bad. It was one of those days when you feel like you're back in the past, and all the good stuff that happened was just a dream. But I woke up today, feeling better. Maybe I can never get rid of it. This invisible illness. Maybe it will always be living somewhere deep inside me. Asleep. Waiting. And when it'll hit me, it'll hit me hard. But if there's one thing Mitzi taught me, it's that you have to pick yourself up and carry on. It doesn't matter that life isn't fair. It doesn't matter that you make mistakes. You fall and rise again. Worlds full of liars, traitors, cowards. But every now and then, you meet someone like Mitzi, who will just smile at it all. Now, I've forgiven the world and myself too. I teach myself to smile again. One day I'll get there. I know I will. Even if it takes me not nine.